Hey Shagheads, welcome to the latest adventures of a shaggy duck life. I'm Curtis Tucker, aka Shags, living the American dream here in small town Enid, Oklahoma. Follow along as I entrepreneur from home and show you what it's like to live in Midwest America. Enjoy my everyday stories about family, my hometown, making money online, growing a lifestyle brand, creating content, anything 70s, and more. So I'm glad you guys are here listening to the audio version of this podcast. Don't forget that there is a video version over at YouTube, and it's under Curtis Tucker TV. This is going to be a special episode video-wise, I hope. I'm going to go ahead and record this audio and then go back on the video and add some photos and some video of what the story is about. So today's story is about why my wife and I purchased the same house twice. The house that we are currently living in is 1925 Indian Drive and I am now sitting in the new Shaggy Duck studio which we just built in the courtyard of the home on Indian Drive. And we just moved in, we've been here uh, several months, but this last week we just closed on our other house. We had it on the market for six months and we'd lived in that house for six years. So we basically have been gone from this house for six years, but uh, five years prior. So 11 years ago, we purchased this house. We lived here for five years and then we moved out and uh, six years later, we have moved back in. So this is the story of why my wife and I purchased the same house twice. A little bit of history about this house. Uh, it was built in the 1960s, designed by my wife's grandma and grandpa, and they hired an architect, a well-known architect out of Oklahoma City to design the house, and they wanted kind of a show house. Uh, it, the house is just well built, uh, brick floors, wide, uh, hallways, large doors, wide doors, uh, thick, long, wide crown molding, hidden doors for closets, uh, just a, 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 a great layout, a courtyard in the front, a courtyard on the side, a courtyard in the back. The back is like kind of being in your own little compound. And so what I'm going to try to do is uh, I'll show you some photos of what the house looked like when we bought it 11 years ago and then I will try to show you some videos of what it looks like today uh, because it's completely different. So anyway, my wife's grandparents built the house and they built it to so uh, her grandma could uh, host a lot of events and they had a lot of guests over and so it was built where the kitchen was kind of hidden and so the staff that was in there cooking and serving couldn't be seen so it was kind of closed off there was a huge in the living room huge living room uh, huge formal room in the living room there was a giant brick wall brick everywhere i used to uh, first time we lived here i nicknamed the house uh, brick house and a large fireplace huge mantle uh, in the living room and then um, just large rooms throughout the house and so they built it uh, kind of as a her bathroom her, her bedroom and bathroom and his bedroom and bathroom then there was a guest bedroom and bathroom and then there's also a small bathroom for guests uh, that come and in, in, are in the living room area so it's a three-bedroom house again um, uh, you know, off the top of my head, over 3,000 square foot. I, I'm not exactly sure of the exact square footage, but uh, and it almost sits on a lot and a half. So it's got a lot of uh, space. Now, a lot, not a lot of yard because uh, there's a lot of concrete. Uh, we've got a circle drive in the front, and then we've got a long driveway down the side, and our garage is hidden kind of in the back. So, you know, how a lot of houses, when you drive by, you can see the garage front out uh, and the cars parked in front. But luckily we have a, a curved driveway in front and then the long driveway to the side where if we park in the garage, nobody can see our cars. And then also part of the landscaping on the house, and I don't know the history exactly right now of where these large boulders came from, but they trucked in a whole bunch of large boulders. So throughout our lawn, there are large boulders and in the front yard, they're formed into a circle. And then within that circle, it's kind of a dirt area where right now there's nothing, but we will eventually plant 
uh, some bushes and, and stuff in there, but uh, they're kind of, uh, kind of almost roundish looking, uh, kind of reddish looking boulders. Uh, I'll put that in the video on the uh, new version of what the house looks like and you guys can take a look at that. So they built the house and they lived here for years and years and years and their son took over the pharmacy. So they owned a pharmacy here in Enid, Oklahoma and they were the second generation that owned the pharmacy and then they eventually turned it over to their son, which is my wife's stepdad and also my boss. I worked for him and the pharmacy for 15 years, 14 years, I was the uh, advertising director. And so during the period that I was the advertising director, I ended up marrying my boss's daughter, who is my wife, his stepdaughter. And so we got married and uh, she had gone off to college in Oklahoma City. And while I was working for him, I commuted back and forth. Uh, we eventually moved back to Enid, bought, uh, or not bought, but uh, rented uh, a couple of houses. And then we eventually found a house actually three streets directly south of this house. And so we moved into it. And so it's in the it's in a neighborhood here in Enid, Oklahoma called Indian Hills, and it's a really cool neighborhood because there's like some windy streets, there's tons of trees, uh, lots of different houses, there's small houses, big houses, uh, mansions, uh, just a really cool area, cool neighborhood. And so we lived three streets over in a smaller home, and that's where we raised our kids, and we lived there about eight years. And we, I, th I don't even know that we were looking for a house. I don't think we were. We were, we were pretty happy where we were. So we were living in that house. And then over the years, unfortunately, uh, my wife's grandparents both passed away and the house uh, became empty. So the family, uh, her kids owned it. And they put it on the market for sale and probably had it priced a little bit too high. And so it sat on the market for a year and did not sell. And, uh, you know, things were starting to, you know, uh, toilets were running and, you know, it just, it just needed a lot of upkeep and repair because there hadn't been anybody living here full time for a year. And so what they decided was to come to my wife and I and offer us a special uh, lower price on the house. And they said, uh, if you guys moved into the house, we'll give you a year to sell your house and get a loan and close on this house. Well, uh, you know, just the house is just phenomenal and uh, constructed way better than the house that we were in. Plus, it had a lot more square footage. Now, it didn't have any more bedrooms, but it, it had a lot more square footage. And so we jumped on it and we quickly moved from three streets over into this house and started living here. And then that gave us a little bit of time to clean up the other house and put it on the market. And as soon as we got it sold, which didn't take very long, I can't remember, uh, probably just uh, a month or two, we got it sold. And then that, that gave us the money to be able to get a loan and close on this house. And so, uh, what we did, it was a three, it's a three, it was a, th it is a three bedroom house. Uh, like I said, very, very large bedrooms. And so when we moved in, I've always had an office because I've always kind of had a side business. And so when we moved in, we used one of the main bedrooms as my wife and I's bedroom, the other main bedroom as my office, and then the guest bedroom uh, our girl, the smaller bedroom, our girls shared because they were pretty little. And, uh, and again, they had their own bathroom. And so they shared a bedroom. And so they were in elementary school when we moved in the first time. So we lived here for uh, five years. And towards the end of that five years, our girls had uh, gotten into, um, I believe, middle school or they might have been starting high school probably late middle school and uh, as they were getting older they decided that they it was time for them to have their own bedrooms and so they started talking you know hey can we get a house with our own bedrooms 
And so basically what we needed was a four bedroom home or a three bedroom house with an office. So we kind of started looking and I remember one time we were uh, at dinner with our in-laws, my in-laws, and they were living in a very large um, house. Uh, on the other side of town and with a big yard and they were wanting to downsize and so at the point in the dinner where we said hey we're thinking about looking for a house uh, so the girls can have their own bedroom they said well we will buy the house back from you so 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 the two owners were the grandparents and then us, which is all family. And now the middle generation, um, my wife's parents wanted to buy it from us. And so they said, you know, you guys get it appraised and we will pay that price and um, you guys can go buy a new house. And so that's what we did. We got it appraised, gave them the price. They were happy with it. And so we were on the look for another house. At that time, we wanted to stay in the neighborhood, but at that time there was not a whole lot of houses on the market, and so we had to look at other parts of town, and we found one in a really cool uh, addition called the Woodlands, and basically the Woodlands was a one entrance exit addition that was just a circle. And around the circle there were houses, there's about 35 houses in this addition, and there was houses on the outside of the circle and then houses on the inside of the circle. And, you know, once you went in, you basically had to go all the way around the circle to get back out. And so it made it, and it was, it was called the Woodlands, and it, it had a ton of woods. I mean, probably the most trees of any neighborhood in town. Um, really cool little neighborhood. And so there was a home for sale. Uh, in that edition, it was a tri-level, which kind of reminded me of the Brady Bunch house. It just in, in certain ways, it kind of had that look. And so we looked at that house, and I fell in love with it uh, immediately. And it was a three-bedroom house, but it had a room off of the garage that I you know, noticed that I could use as an office. And so after five years of living at 1925, we sold it to my wife's parents and we moved over to the Woodlands and I set up a new Shaggy Duck studio over there. Now that was a cool house because of the, the neighborhood and that was where I fed the squirrel Smalls. I met, you know, I had him coming into my office and I fed him and the little Carolina wrens would fly into our garage every spring and, and make a nest in there and we had a a uh, couple, a pair of uh, cardinals that would come and eat. And so, so we had this whole really cool nature thing going on because I could open my doors of my office and, uh, you know, the squirrels and the birds. I even had the, the cardinals and the wrens actually fly into my office before. So they would come in and, and it was really cool, uh, but there was a lot of yard. It was a huge yard and a lot of trees. So every time there was a windstorm or uh, we went through two ice storms while we lived there and lost a lot of trees and a lot of limbs, uh, just a lot, a lot, a lot of upkeep on the yard, which I unfortunately, uh, as the years moved on, uh, was not able to keep up with. And so the yard, you know, you know, started to get a little bit worse and worse. And um, I just wasn't being able to get keep all of the trees trimmed back and the bushes and, and all this. And so it was kind of a weird, the five years that we lived there, our girls were in high school and uh, my wife's uh, parents were going through some health issues. And so, so our girls were at dance, uh, you know, they'd go to school and then immediately after school they would go to dance and then they would stay at dance until about 8.30 or 9 at night. My wife would leave work and then she would go take them food and then go help her parents and either eat with them and all that. So, so really the, almost the whole six years that we lived uh, in that house, uh, we weren't there a lot. I was there a lot, but I was always out in the garage office room uh, where I spent pretty much all my time. And so the house set em sat empty a lot. I mean, 80% of the day, there was nobody in the house. And so um, our kids, you know, did not play in the yard, did not become friends with neighbors. There really weren't any kids, unfortunately, in the neighborhood at the time. 
um, until eventually one moved in um, across the way and my youngest daughter spent some time with her. But it was just a house that we did not, as a family, uh, get to spend a lot of time in. So it, it actually worked out to be a really great house just because it was just there, uh, you know, for us to, to spend time in and take a shower and then head on out. And so anyway, so uh, through those six years, uh, my wife's mom had cancer. And again, my, my wife would spend a lot of time over there taking care of her. And she eventually passed away um, in this home that we're living in now. And then, uh, and then that kind of left her stepdad by himself. Well, he was kind of lonely and uh, was a member of the country club. And so he would invite my wife to go. He, he basically decided to kind of start eating there every day and made that where he ate instead of cooking at home by himself. And so she would go to the club and eat with him and then come help him, you know, do laundry. And so she started spending a lot of time at this house taking care of him for the next few years. And so that went on, the, you know, that went on for about almost the whole five or six years uh, that she spent a lot of time in this house taking care of her parents. And then eventually, uh, about a year and a couple months ago, her father passed away in this house. And so the house uh, became empty again. And between the two, uh, my wife's mom and stepdad, together they had a blended family of seven kids. And so the home basically uh, was willed to all of the seven kids. So we immediately became a seventh owner of the house that we had owned six years before again. And so just, uh, I don't know where it came up, but it, at, at a conversation or at some point, my daughters and my wife decided it might be a fun and cool idea to buy the house back and move back in. And uh, I was like, oh, okay. I mean, I really like the house, but again, so moving back into the house, now our girls were off, you know, heading off to college, but they still were coming back on weekends and summers and, and all that. So, but at this age, they wanted their own bedrooms. And so we still had to address the problem of if we move back in, we were going to be a bedroom short because I still needed an office. And so what we did was before we moved in, well, actually, um, we had six months before we sold our other house. So in that six months, we started moving in. And at the very beginning of that, I hired my buddy that I do my other podcast with. So in the back of the house, in the courtyard area, there are these areas that are completely covered by uh, roof, roofs with shingles. And they've got brick underneath them and then ceiling fans. And they were areas where you could sit, uh, enjoy the weather, and one area where you could barbecue. And the area directly across from the house where kind of an area where they usually barbecued, there was kind of a outdoor closet where you would put like your tools and lawnmower and stuff like that. And so what we did was we uh, put two walls up and enclosed that area and then I took the door off of that outdoor closet and made that kind of a second area in the office. And so we enclosed that area, took the ceiling out, which, which raised it and made it a, a pitched roof, and put my office outside uh, in the courtyard. And uh, so it's really cool. So if you've seen the pictures, uh, that's the new Shaggy Duck Studio. And that's where I am sitting right now recording this. And I will include a little bit of video of, of the studio on the uh, video at Curtis Tucker TV on YouTube. And so we uh, basically started moving our stuff in, moved in, and then the bedroom that used to be my office, uh, that's now my wife and I's master bedroom, uh, the bedroom that we used to have the first time we lived here, uh, is my oldest daughter's room and then the guest room is now my younger daughter's room and so everybody has their own room and so uh, one thing that I have left out is the big reason uh, that we moved back in so the uh, when we sold the house six years ago to my wife's parents 
uh, it needed some update. We'd lived here, so it had sat empty a year, and then we moved in and lived here five years. And the five years that we lived here, um, because of my my entrepreneur job kind of collapsed in 2012 due to the Google Panda update. So I wasn't making as much money because I was trying to uh, start a new business, which was the Enid Buzz. And so we didn't have a whole lot of money to do repairs and keep up the house. And it had an old shake roof, which had a lot of moss on it. Um, it some areas needed painted. Um, the landscaping needed redone. Anyway, it just it needed some work and uh, we just weren't able to keep up with all the repairs on it. And so uh, one of the reasons it was a good um, chance to sell it to her parents was, you know, that way we didn't have to do all the updates because they, they knew what needed repaired and they, were, they wanted to do that. So what they decided was when they bought it from us six years ago was they wanted it to be their last home. And so they didn't care how much money they put in to remodel it. Uh, you know, thinking, hey, we're not going to get that money back out when we sell it because they knew they weren't going to sell it. They were just going to live here. So they just uh, started putting a lot of money in. So what they did was uh, completely re-roof the house, went from shake to uh, comp composition shingle, uh, black shingle. They remodeled uh, the entire kitchen, the cabinets, the stove, the oven, uh, sinks, uh, cabinet top, um, countertops, uh, refrigerator, uh, everything completely remodeled. And then one of the one of the biggest things that they did was they tore out that brick wall between the kitchen and the living room that had the huge fireplace. And so the home no longer has a huge fireplace; doesn't have a fireplace at all. And they actually, you know, had to go all the way up through the ceiling and repatch the the roof. Uh, to take, they took out the entire chimney, huge, huge chimney, and they saved all of those bricks from the chimney and the wall and all that, and they were piled out in the yard. And so those bricks are the bricks that I use to brick the bottom around my new office. And so it it sort of matches, even though they a lot of them were from the inside, uh, it still matches. So so my office. Uh, it's pretty cool because it's got bricks from the old house. So anyway, so they opened up the area from the kitchen to the living room and put a huge, huge island in there. They remodeled uh, basically the two big bathrooms. Um, they did some repair on the other small bathroom, but kind of left it as is. But they uh, installed walk-in showers. Um, they even tore out some walls to make uh, shower bigger. Uh, which uh, they moved some walls in what used to be my old office and, and uh, made the door in a couple different places. Um, we had had kind of a hallway closet that the girls played in. It was so big that the, girl, we, the girls used it as like a playroom. They moved the door to our bedroom back beyond that closet, which made now makes it our closet um, for our bedroom. So we, we have a big walk-in closet for our bedroom now. So just a lot of uh, upgrades. They uh, upgraded the landscaping, um, repainted, redid the fence. The um, fence was kind of falling apart and so they took it out and did a complete bamboo fence all the way around the house. So not only were we moving back into our old home, but we're, we've moved back into our old home that's been completely remodeled. Uh, new AC unit, um, heating cooling units, uh, hot water tanks, um, just about everything. Uh, oh, and so throughout the home, the, one of my favorite parts of the home before was all of the wood. Um, uh, expensive hardwood throughout, crown molding, probably 8 inch to 10 inch crown molding, um, just wood grain, uh, wood grain panels all down the hallways in the living room. Uh, one of the biggest changes was my mother-in-law went in and had everything painted white. And so uh, everything does look completely different. Now the brick floors that we had have stayed. There was one main, uh, when you when you first come in, it's, it's one of those living rooms that 
uh, a lot of the older homes had that nobody ever spends any time in. And so when we lived here before in the five years, it had white carpeting and that was the room. I think we had a couch and a piano up against the walls in there. But we, other than that, the first time we lived here, we kept that open and that was the room that the girls danced in, that they would have some friends over and they would put on shows and do a lot of dancing in there. And when her parents moved in, uh, they remodeled that and they put in hardwood floors. And so the carpet's gone on there. And so now that we've moved back in, we've put um, you know, a whole sectional in there, put a big TV uh, on the wall uh, that kind of you can move and spin it different ways. And so, so now we have two large living areas with large TVs and sectionals and couches. And uh, just uh, so it's just a completely remodeled home on top of the fact that I've added, uh, you know, the office. And so the office has isn't isn't really connected. So the house kind of forms a U around the backyard. And so there's the main house on one side. The garage would be like the bottom of the U. And then now my office is the other side of the U. And so they're all connected by roof, but you can't walk from my office to the house without going outside through the courtyard. Now, there is a wall uh, at the back of the room in my office that we could punch a hole in and put a door, and that would go into a room in the garage. So basically, um, I could add a whole nother room to my office and then have access to the house through the garage if we wanted to do that. Now, uh, there's a, a pretty cool bench and some shelving in there that I would have to get rid of. So at this point, um, I'm not doing that, but uh, you know, sometime down, down in the future. But anyway, I guess my point was um, my office is not on the heating and cooling for the house, but it does have what they call a mini split. And so it keeps the uh, temperature uh, regulated throughout the year out here on my own. And so uh, we tried to make the glass and the doors and everything to my office match uh, the rest of the house. So if somebody new were to come over, uh, hopefully they would not know that it was an add on. They would think that this office room has always been out here the whole time. And so that's basically kind of the story of how we ended up buying the same house twice. And uh, even though it is the same house, it really is almost completely different this time around, uh, just with the way that it looks, the way that it's arranged, uh, the way that my office is no longer inside the house. And uh, so anyway, um, I, I'm going to try really hard to uh, add some video and some photos of what the house looked like before, what the house look like, looks like now, so you guys can kind of see what Shaggy Duck Studio looks like, what uh, the house looks like, uh, since it's kind of part of a Shaggy Duck life. Uh, I think you guys uh, will enjoy it. And uh, again, it's a really cool house in a really cool neighborhood. One of these days, I'm going to drive around and show you guys uh, Enid, Oklahoma, uh, some of the highlights, some of the neighborhoods and things like that. That's going to be on an upcoming episode. So I hope you guys have been enjoying these stories of uh, behind the scenes of Shaggy Duck Studio. It's just a Shaggy Duck life. Uh, it's been fun owning my own business and uh, you know trying to create things and doing this uh, podcast and the vlog on YouTube. Uh, not growing super fast, but I'm not able to put a whole bunch of, uh, of time into either one of them yet, but I am going to try to up the game on the videos uh, for these uh, podcasts, and so hopefully some of you will go to the YouTube channel, Curtis Tucker TV, and subscribe, and uh, I'll start putting some more effort into those videos instead of it just being a talking head. I'll have I'll be I'll be running around or I'll mix in some video from some stuff uh, which you know those are more more popular. So anyway, thank you for listening to a Shaggy Duck Life. I appreciate you guys. Don't forget I also do uh, Buzzhead Radio podcast and Seventies Buzz podcast with Todd Wheeler. So you guys can catch those episodes weekly. I'm trying to keep this uh, podcast on a weekly basis. I think I did miss last week. I'm about to sneeze. I apologize for that. Hopefully I will be able to 
My sneezes always come in twos, and so there went the second one. I'll try to edit that out on the audio, otherwise it could be a little bit loud. But uh, again, thanks for checking in. I'm going to uh, sign off. I just woke uh, Graham, my puppy dog, up, and he's probably gonna be jumping in my lap any minute, uh, wanting to get a little bit of attention. Here he comes. And so I'm gonna sign off. Hope you guys have a great day. Appreciate you guys, and I'll see you on the next episode.